Hello there, Ray here, and today I would like to show you my 1.13 fish farm. This allows you to get cod, salmon, as well as puffer fish. In my snapshot review video, I said it's possible to farm these new 1.13 fish, similar to what you would do when farming squid. Now there are some things that I noticed that are a little bit different than squid, and I will go over these now. I ran the test to see how the 1.13 fish would spawn, so I got two different scenarios going on here. This is a similar test that I perform in, in my Fanta farm. What I got is a command that as soon as a fish will spawn, it will kill the fish and it also place a glass block right where the fish spawned. And um, in this test, you can see that this entire floor here is pretty much glass inside of here. So this was a three deep area of water and I tested many layers of water and it seems that they will spawn in the minimal amount of water. It needs to be uh, three meters and they will spawn in the center of the three meters of water. As you can see, there is glass only at this level, no other level, nothing above or below. This means that the fish will not spawn at the very bottom of the ocean or at the very top layer of the ocean. So besides knowing the minimal amount of water that's needed to allow the fish to spawn, I also wanted to know how um, high as well as low in the world fish can spawn. So I ran the same kind of test where I have glass being placed in for every fish. And as you can see, we got glass being placed at the very bottom of the world all the way up to the very top of the world. This means that fish are capable of spawning in all Y levels of the world. And um, that's at least for this snapshot. And this is good because this means we can avoid having squid spawn inside of our fish farm. And squid normally spawn from sea level all the way down to 46. So we can either build a fish farm below it or above it. In my snapshot review video, I show that it is possible for fish to spawn in with squid. This means that they're both part of the mob spawning. I also showed that it's possible to stop the fish from spawning by holding up the mob cap of the water mobs, such as squid. And the mob cap is five, so if I just put five squids in there, one, two, three, four, five, this will be the mob cap. If I put six, this will overwhelm the mob cap. So now, if I kill off these cod over here, you'll see they're unable to spawn any more cod. This is because the water mob cap is being held up by the squid. Now if I come ahead and remove these squid, you'll see that the cod will be able to spawn in again. And, oh, one more squid in there. Yep, now you can see some cod are spawning in. Now another thing is that cod are capable of going over the uh, mob cap. Obviously, mob cap is only five for the uh, water mobs, but the fish themselves, they don't check the mob cap. Similar to what I showed with the phantoms, they're able to continue to spawn, and you can get thousands, I think I had like, 3,000 fish in here at one time, just when I was AFK. So this is a fish farm that I made using the concept. We have the fish farm up way above the ocean. This way we don't have any squid spawns. And we also prevent the other uh, mobs, other water mobs in the ocean from affecting it. Cause obviously we don't want to have squid. We just have six squid down below in the ocean. It will prevent the fish from spawning up here. So we're high enough up so that all the squid will despawn underneath as well as any other water mobs, which don't really pay attention to the mob cap anyways. But here we can see that we have a bunch of water that is inside of here. Each of the water is a column that is three meters tall because that's the amount of water that's needed for them to spawn. And the fish will spawn in this middle layer. So I can just represent it by putting like cod there. Um, there is a current. So the main water source is up here and these two are currents going downward, but the fish seem to be able to easily uh, be able to swim up the column as well as swim down it. They really don't pay too much attention to the column. I did also put transparent blocks around the outside. And obviously you don't want to have solid blocks because it will interrupt the mob spawning. With more solid blocks, it will prevent the mobs from um, being able to start their spawning in that location. So I have a lot of transparent blocks here and I have a lot of water sources and I just have some gates under here, underneath here holding up the water. Each of the water sources here are in their own little column. They're not connected with the other water sources just to try to prevent the fish from just swimming up here too long. So with such a small area, they either like swim up or they'll, when they want to, they'll swim down. When they swim down, they'll just fall out of the farm. Um, I also have a top to this just to extend the area where the spawning attempts will occur. Since if there's no block up here above the world, the game's not even gonna check this to start spawning attempts. So by coming out this far, I'll at least get a little bit more spawning attempts um, inside of the farm. I just put some slabs on top to prevent other mobs from spawning on top. So since the fish don't take up the mob cap, it doesn't matter how slow it takes them to come out of the farm, as long as they eventually come out of the farm, so they don't create a ton of leg up there. Now, once they do come out of the farm, they will fall 24 meters and land on the slab, and this will cause them to die, and they will drop their loot. So uh, pufferfish will just drop pufferfish, cod will drop rod cod, 
and um, the salmon fish will drop raw salmon. And what I have underneath is a hopper minecart, which is coming along picking up all the items. And then they will transport them over to here. This is the unloading station, which will unload the items into this chest here. And as you can see, you get tons of cod as well as puffer fish if you build this in the um, right biome. I FK'd like about five hours and I got like all these double chests full of fish. So yeah, it's not the fastest farm, but you can still get tons of fish. Not sure what you can do with all of it. Probably the most important one is puffer fish, which will allow you to be able to make water breathing potions. If you want to get cod, you can build this up in a cold biome or a normal biome or a lukewarm biome. This will provide cod. If you wanted to get salmon, you can build this in a frozen, cold ocean or rivers. If you want to get puffer fish, you can build this in lukewarm as well as warm ocean. Now this means that if you just want to have like puffer fish, then you can just build this in like a warm ocean and you only get puffer fish. If you only want to get cod, then you can build this in a normal ocean. That's all you would get is cod. If you only want to get salmon, then you can build this like in a frozen ocean or like a river. This way you'd only get um, salmon. With each fish, they're also unique in size. As you can see, the cod is the smallest and he is less than half a meter tall. The salmon here is exactly half a meter tall and the puffer fish is just under one meter tall. And this is a puffer fish I summoned in with uh, no AI, so I wouldn't uh, move around and stuff. And as you can see, he's not puffed up, so he's the smallest form and he's really small, but although his hitbox is the same size. This way when he puffs up, his hitbox doesn't change. Something that I noticed that's quite strange about this one fish, which is the cod, is that the hitbox looks like it's not touching the top. So that little red line, not touching the very top of this block, but it's still able to suffocate on solid blocks above it. I think the hitbox might be off by a little bit because here I have a cod which is sitting above the water. And I noticed this in my testing when cod would jump out of the water, they could sit on the edge of a block and still not be able to uh, suffocate from being out of the water. But here you can see that he is sitting on top and he's not touching the water, but he's still capable of not taking damage. So yeah, that's what makes me think that the hitbox may be slightly too high or too low or bigger than what it really shows here. Something's not quite right because he should be able to take damage from being out of the water in this situation and he should not be able to take damage from a situation like this where he is underneath of the solid block. Nice thing about these fish that you can pick up with a water bucket and then place back down again. Once you place them down, they will have a special tag which will prevent them from despawning because it came from a bucket. So normally the fish that come out in the ocean will despawn if you're more than 128 meters away from them unless you give them a name tag. So you don't have to worry about these uh, fish that come out of a bucket. You can use these such as like your aquarium fish or like a pet fish. Now I can even show this with the command. This is the command I typed in to get all the NVT data about this fish. And right here it says from bucket. And if this is set to one, this means it's a fish that came from a bucket and cannot despawn. This is different than well, most moms that can't despawn. They usually use this tag up here, which is persistence uh, required. And if this is set to one, then this means that they cannot despawn. So each type of fish has a different number of fish, which it considers to be a school. So for salmon, it is only six. If you add another fish, it wouldn't be part of the same school. It made its own school. And here we got um, cod. Their maximum is nine. So if I add another one, he won't be part of it. And for puffer fish, it is one. So if you just have two puffer fishes, they'll just be on their own. There are a couple of clips I forgot to put in a previous video that I have put at the end of this video. So stay to the end if you want to see those. There you have it guys, a fish farm that allows you to take advantage of the 1.13 new fish, allowing you to get the cod, the salmon, as well as the puffer fish as items. So if you found this interesting, show me the like. If you'd like to see more stuff with the snapshots, subscribe, and don't forget to comment. Bye bye Some viewers asked how I was possible to get such precise data about how phantoms spawn, and this is my testing area. Not sure if you've seen it during the video, but pretty much what I got going here is a command block, and this command block will find a phantom, and when it does find a phantom, it will place a green stained glass where the phantoms spawn. And I just AFK'd in this one little area. And over time, all of these phantoms spawn. And as you can see, they start to form a box shape. So I can def easily definely see like the bottom, here's like the sides and like the tops over here, as well as here's some more sides. And um, then I just use a fill command to measure the distance between all these corners. And I got the measurements out and that's what I um, estimated them to be. Also, I just figured up how far they were from the player just by measuring distance between where the player is AFKing and the highest phantom. Yeah, it wasn't too hard. I just had AFK here like three hours or something. And I got pretty good results at how the phantoms are able to spawn. 
This command's pretty cool to see exactly how the phantoms also fly by placing glass where they're flying. Um, I also had some clips of previous videos that I forgot to put into those videos, so I can put those at the end of this video. Um, they're not really that important. I guess one of them's kind of important. It's about uh, phantom spawnings that I forgot to put in. The other ones are kind of these funny glitches that I found during the snapshots. I noticed that zombie horses are broken in this version. <laughs> Looks kind of cool though. Looks like kind of ghosts running around. Now, if you look at the different tags that the turtles can have, this one tag here is has egg. I wonder if this tag is used maybe when the turtle is uh, dropping its eggs off. In the overworld, you can prevent phantoms from spawning altogether just by placing a solid block above the player's head to prevent sky axis from reaching the player, and this will stop the phantoms from spawning. This will also increase your sub chunks if you have this AFKing above a efficient farm, but in the end dimension, it doesn't matter what type of block is above the player's head.